and welcome to this season two of Deep Dark Ross. In this video, I'm going to show you how to spawn a robot in Gazebo in Ross 2 Galactic. So there are different quirks and things that have changed and especially I wanted to do a video that at least showed uh, the simplest way of doing it. Okay. Also, I'll explain how to define a chakra in a way that you can have meshes, which is absolutely essential if you want to have a robot that it's not a bunch of boxes and spheres. So let's let's get started. So as you can see here, let me just I have here already spawned the robot. So this this robot is the version of the box bot that you have here in the git. I'll leave it in the video description. Uh, I leave it in the video description and you can download it with all the code that I've just uh, I'm going to show you right now. So how does this work and how did I do it? So this this little fella here is um, is this box bot that you can move around so you can move it around it's a differential drive very simple basic but there's a lot to do in ROS2 when it comes to having a robot in the world so let me show you how let me stop this and let's go to the code let me minimize myself here. Okay. There are basically two or three parts to make this work. The first thing is obviously you have to define a robot chakra or URDF, whatever you want. I'll explain the chakra because it's the most complex one, but URDFs work exactly the same. Let me show you the box bot. So box bot, it's a chakra like this, a standard chakra. The first thing is how do I get meshes? Because the the package system that we used in ROS one it doesn't work anymore, or at least I didn't make it. I, I couldn't get it to work properly. What we have to do is put the meshes in this way. We say mesh, file name, and then find the name of the package, and then the path to the package. In this case, it's boxbot description, and in the folder meshes, and inside it, the, um, the die, in this case, is this cute, tiny cube that you have here. If you want just normal boxes, you have an example here of how to do it with standard geometric shapes like box, cylinder, and sphere. I have it just here. Okay, great. This is the first step. Then the next step is how to spawn this in Gazebo. If we go to Boxbot Gazebo, we have a launch file, and inside here, we have the following launches. Let me. This one is the one that we are going to launch to start the world and to spawn the robot inside the world. This one is the start world symbol, which is here. And what we're doing is calling this uh, here the launch description. We are just launching this gazebo.launch.py, which is inside this gazebo ROS package. So it's a Python script that has these inputs. In this case, as default values of inputs, we have the world, which is the one that we want to sp um, generate. Yeah, we haven't done this. This comes into Gazebo ROS package, which it should be installed by default. If not, just sudo app to get installed. Okay, then the next step is spawn robot ROS2, which is the meat of this video, essentially. 
here we have the following. I, I place this variable just to do tests, but we're going to do it for chakros. So we define here the chakro file name, we define here the package where we can find it, and then we define also the position where we want to spawn the robot and the orientation and the name of the robot in case you want to generate multiple ro robots of the same type. Here we are just getting a path. In this case we are going to use this chakra. And then what we are doing is we're using this chakra python module to process this file and then stringify it. So this variable xml has a stringified version of the xml file that I showed you just there. Just that when we process the file this one what it does is go to all the chakras that I showed you here. So here this one and it will essentially compile and generate a unique file with all the data and that is the one that is stringified and saved inside here. Once you have it then we have three nodes. We have this spawn robot which it doesn't spawn the robot directly so it's the one that communicates with gazebo with the gazebo client and is the one that once it has all the data it will spawn the robot inside gazebo in this case we are using spawn entity um, if you want to know more i've left in the notebook the the link to this script to this script basically and here you'll see all the arguments that you can set and give to customize this spawning without getting inside the messages of the, the service. Once you have it, so here, this one here, name, and then the arguments. In this case, as I showed you here, you can see all the arguments you have available. I would say that these are the only ones that you will need probably which is the entity name, so the name of the robot. In this case, I'm generating a base name and a number so that I'm able to spawn multiple versions of the robot in the same world. Uh, there you go, then X, Y, and Z, roll, pitch, and yaw. And also, we, there are three methods, I think three or four methods to spawn a robot uh, using spawn entity. There's with a file, there's with a, a database, and it's with a topic. I decided topic was the best option just because it allows me to do it um, in another node. And I decide the name of the topic. In this case, it's robot description, but in theory, it could be anyone. Okay. Once you have it, then I've also set this to 30 seconds because I thought that it's enough to to give gazebo time to start. The next node is the one that publishes inside this robot description topic and we can have a look at the file which is this one here. This one is the one that publishes in this topic. Uh, it's a topic publisher, a simple ROS2 node that publishes the data that you're giving it. In this case, this XML data that you give it when you initialize it uh, around here. You can see that there are two arguments, XML string and the robot description topic in case you want another name. Okay. And that's what I'm giving it as arguments. I'm giving the XML string, which is XML uh, data, and then the robot description topic name, which is in this case, robot description. Once we have it, then I'm also starting this um, robot state publisher to, in theory, publish the robot state. Um, we'll see in the next video 
especially if I get it to work as it should. Then once you have this, you start all the nodes and that's it. Like this, you should be able to spawn any kind of robot in Chakra or URDF format. It should work as it worked in ROS1, at least the gazebo part. The ARMFIS and Robot State Publishers is another story, which if you leave it in the comments, if you're interested in, in that I explain it I, and I develop something to make it simpler, just leave it in the comments and I'll try to do it as best as I can. Once you have this, then you should be able to spawn it. So let's have a look. Launch, ROS2 launch, Boxbot Gazebo. There we go. Spawning. Okay. And there you go. Things to note. One of the things that you have to be careful also is, as always, in ROS2, to define and set that both the launch folders and worlds are installed but also as a program you have to set this robot description publisher so that it's executable yeah and in the case of the robot description you should also set that the robot and the meshes are installed in the system once that's done it should at least appear in gazebo in this manner okay and that's it short video but i hope it's useful as as always leave in the comments something that you didn't understand something that i you would like me to um do a deep dark ross uh, especially the robot state publishing for example um arvis uh, visualization of the robot description of the of the robot basically and other topics just leave it in the comments and that's it thanks and see you in the next video. Peace.